Hey everyone, it's Scott from CertMedia.com. Today I'm be going over the Google XML Sitemap plugin. Google XML Sitemaps is a free plugin on the WordPress.org repository. I'll include a link to it in the description below. Currently sitting at around a substantial 2 million in active installations, and it's a very useful plugin. If you've ever needed an XML sitemap but aren't using an SEO plugin, then this is a good quick solution to generate one. You should no longer be manually creating site, uh, XML sitemaps for your website because they'll become out of date, and most of the time there's, just, there's no benefit. So how this plugin works is it dynamically generates it based on the pages and the parameters that you set within the plugin. I'm going to go through each of the options and I'm going to also describe some of the more advanced options that are on the, in the plugin as well. Update notifications. This section allows you to notify Google and Bing about updates to your site. What this does is it pings the search engines to recrawl the website to check for that new URL for a blog post that you may have published or if you recently made a change. And that's all it does and it helps the pages become updated in Google search faster. You can also add the sitemap URL to the virtual robots.txt file. If you have a real robots.txt file, which you can check in your file manager or in your FTP access, then this doesn't help you. So if you have a manually generated robots.txt file, you'll still need to declare the location of the XML sitemap. You can also increase the memory limit, but you shouldn't really need to mess with these options in particular. If you are going to mess with them, it's best to do it on a global scale instead of doing it through these options. It can automatically compress the sitemap if the client supports it. So what this will do is it will attempt to serve the sitemap as gzip, and almost all servers will now support this without any problem. And if you go to your sitemap, it'll look exactly the same. If you enable the option and you notice that the sitemap is not loading correctly, there might be an encoding error, then you'll want to go ahead and have that option disabled. But more or less, leaving the option enabled is the recommended option. You can also modify if you wanted to include an XLST style sheet. So if you want to have a style sheet that you custom wrote, you can include it here or just use the default. This is purely cosmetic and it's only for you. It's a completely open source, automatically generated one that they have. There's no reason to change it. There's not going to be any benefit to you by using a different style sheet because Google doesn't care for the style sheet. You can also override the base URL of the sitemap. So if you would like it to be instead of sitemap.xml, sitemap underscore index.xml, you could modify that here. So if we try this, you'll have to scroll all the way to the bottom, hit the update button. And, oh uh, yes, hold on. Pasting the full URL, this should take. Let's just put it in WP content, for example. That option doesn't appear to be working. It might be an issue on my install. But nevertheless, you can go in here and you can follow the directions for an advanced base URL. And the base URL ultimately doesn't have any impact. It's just purely a cosmetic item. Once again, I wouldn't really bother moving it around. Then you can also include the sitemap in HTML format. This doesn't particularly matter either. It's not really required anymore. And it used to be a recommended practice, like having a dedicated page that was also it. But if you go to sitemap.xml, it's fine. And I believe the URL is sitemap.html, exactly the same thing. It doesn't matter. Ultimately, Googlebot doesn't care, and you really only need the XML version nowadays. You can also allow telemetry data to be collected by them. It's disabled by default. It's truly your choice. Now, you can include additional URLs to be included in the sitemap that may not exist in WordPress. So if you have a WordPress install, but you have a folder of, say, an old 
old static HTML page that you haven't converted and you want to include it in the sitemap, you can easily add it here. Under the post priority, you could select the priority that each post has and how it'll be calculated. All posts having the same prior priorities nowadays don't matter, particularly search engines just ignore it. Google doesn't use it anymore, and I believe Bing followed suit as well. It's just not a common functionality to be used anymore because the priority of content, it doesn't matter. If your site doesn't get any comments or you have it disabled, just use automatic priority calculation so they'll all have the same priority. It doesn't matter. In the sitemap content, it only includes by default the home page, the post, and the static page. I recommend including your categories, your author pages, and your tag pages. If you include archives, it will also include aspects such as your date archives, and date archives should be no indexed by default. This will not no index content. It will only include or exclude it from the sitemap. And then you can also choose to include the last modify time. I recommend that you leave that data on there. If you wish, you can exclude categories by checking them here. And if you wish to exclude certain posts, you have to include them by the ID. So to find the ID of a post, you go to your post, all posts. And if you hover over edit, you'll see question mark post equals and that number one, that one is the ID of the post. To change the frequencies, this, again, doesn't matter particularly too much because most search engines don't bother with this data. So you can leave it as it is, and it won't really matter too much. And the same thing goes for priorities. Once you've done that and you've reset your post, your sitemap, you can now visit the sitemap XML page again. And now it includes the authors, the taxonomy category, the taxonomy category, and it should include the authors and all your posts and pages are listed out. The, the only time you'd really necessarily need to use this plugin, as I mentioned in the beginning, is if you are not using an SEO plugin. Almost all SEO plugins now include sitemap generation built in. So if you have Yoast SEO, for instance, installed and you have the sitemap function, the Yoast SEO has sitemap functionality baked into it, there's not any benefit using this plugin over the competition. Otherwise, that's basically all you need to know about the uh, Google XML sitemaps plugin. If you have any particular questions or if you want to know whether you should use it or one from your specific SEO plugin, you can go ahead and leave it in the comments below and I'll try to help you. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.